Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by Datacom Solutions, Fellowship of Faith, and Huntsville Hospital. Bulldog fans, welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie, your host. The Bulldogs go up to Pine Bluff, Arkansas, turn back the homecoming revelers at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff by defeating the Golden Lions 45-14. to A little Maynard time, coach. Yeah, well, you know, the guys, um, we came out a little sluggish. Um, even though it was homecoming, um, you know, the, just went a lot of energy in the stadium. And I tried to get the guys uh, fired up and let them know, look, no matter if it's sell out or empty stadium. We got to bring our own energy. We got to come to play. And, uh, you know, guys kind of came out flat there the first quarter. Took a little time to get going, but once we got going, we got going. 13,000 fans on hand at Pine Bluff, Coach. And one thing, being a visiting team, you didn't want to get the home crowd anything to cheer about. Right. You know, um, last couple of weeks they scored 38 and 49 points. So uh, we knew they could be explosive and they could, they could make big plays with that running back and the quarterback and that receiver down the field. So uh, we didn't want to get that crowd into the game and get them some energy, some homecoming energy. Um, and so the defense played lights out, man, just kept shutting them down, making them punt. And uh, we never really gave them a chance to uh, make a big play and get the crowd back in the game. You've been building to this moment, Coach. If you win two out of the last three games, you'll assure yourself the Bulldogs having their first winning season since 2012. Two games ago, Coach, Grambling coming in this weekend. But this was a good chance for you to see how your team finishes a game again. Yeah, it was. You know, um, four teams up at halftime, like I said. We kind of got going a little bit in the second quarter. And then third quarter, um, you know, I told the team, I said, uh, we're going to be up 35 zip going into the fourth quarter. Uh, but they got some field goals, and it was 35 to 6. So it, we kind of did what I wanted to do. I thought that we could move the ball um, and want to get back to the, to the regular offense, studying the five wides. And mm -hmm. uh, we kind of went back to that, and, and we scored three touchdowns there in the, in the third quarter to kind of uh, put the game away. We went to a college football game, and a NASCAR race broke out. We'll come back and look at the first half highlights right here on the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Lane. Hello, I'm Fancy Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Darrell brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. There's student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. 98.9 WJAB FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. I'm just a prisoner of love. I get misty just tolling. 90.9 WJAB. From the campus of Alabama A&M University. Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement. But the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Yeah.
Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie. Coach, I mentioned Maynard time, and that's what we call it when you put your stamp on the ball game. Coming out of the tunnel at Pine Bluff with all the homecoming hoopla going on, what was the first thing you told your team about staying focused? Uh, that was just it, you know, because uh, it would just seem to be um, real flat. Everybody seemed to be flat, and uh, the band was still on the field when it was time for us to run through on the field. So we had to actually run behind the band and on down our sideline. So I just told the guys, we got to bring our own energy. It don't matter who we play and how many people's in the stands. And uh, we got to play like it's the biggest game of the season, which it was. ACRG made the trip, Coach, and it's good to always see some maroon and white in the stands with you. But on the road, you can't expect that. So it is every man for himself. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, like you say, um, ACRG was there. I think my wife wound up sitting with, the, with him, and uh, it was great to see him there. Um, we saw him after the game and waved to him and, and thanked those guys for showing up and supporting. And, um, you know, but like you said, you can't, you can't expect it. You just got to go do what you do. And now, Coach, you're coming up on an opportunity to have a winning season. Coming off the big win, the Magic City Classic, this could have been a letdown game. Yeah, it was like uh, a lot of people say a trap game. Um, after the Magic City Classic, before Grambling. And so I think, uh, you know, it was kind of a little bit of a letdown that first quarter, like I said. And, uh, we did a good job of, of getting them back focused and, and the guys responding and playing. And, um, and so now we got to get ready for Grambling. So it worked out pretty good. We'll say the Bulldogs looking clean on this new field at Pine Bluff, wearing those white pants, white jerseys, maroon numerals, and the maroon striped white helmets. Thank you to Coach Henry Harris for getting the Bulldogs looking good. And here's your opening drive. Yeah, this is a little pass to um, Jenkins. And uh, he did a great job of uh, getting the first down there. Coach, and if come you come back and Walters on the inside zone. I'm sorry, Coach. If you had to give an award to a blocking receiver this week, Xavier Moore had to be at the top of that list. No, Marcellus Clash. Oh, good job. Marcellus Clash on both of the uh, um, little screen passes we threw that they broke. Uh, Dale and... Uh, Octavius, uh, he was he was just blocking on the point of both of those. And we see Yurik Bethune there with three tackles for loss. He had an outstanding game. Yeah, he did. Yurik had another outstanding game, and I uh, had a couple of sacks, I think, or at least one sack. And so um, he's he's continued to play great for us. And here's a great run by Walters getting us out of the end zone. Um, went to him back to back there and got some breathing room. And here he is again on power. And uh, he's just a tough runner, man, and it's hard to bring him down. Trayvon Walters, newly engaged, now having the first game after his engagement. Coach, we noticed right away that we could run the ball on Pine Bluff. Yeah, we did. We, uh, but we was backed up there early the first quarter, and like I said, we was a little flat. So uh, we kind of struggled there in the first quarter. But uh, that was a great play by Yurik Bethune on the strip, on the sack strip fumble. And uh, now we got the ball back in the second quarter now. Coach, you were stuck with bad field position also. Did not help you out. Played a little conservative early on. Yeah, we had to. And it was into the win also. Um, so we, now we got the win on our back and we can open it up a little bit. Here's another little swing pass to Jenkins and a good blocking by uh, the receivers downfield. And you mentioned Marcellus Clash as well. Not having a big day receiving, but Coach being able to block and spring other receivers, that made a difference in the ball game. It did. And it turns a four-yard pass into a 24-yard pass, and Akil Glass on two back-to-back -back quarterback draws, they had to be scratching their head like, what's going on? <laughs> and here's a great pass right here by Akil Glass throwing it to Xavier and Moore, Coach. He threw him open, great targeting in the end zone. Yeah, we had a little corner route called there, and uh, Glass stepped up and, and made a great throw. You can see right here, he steps up, let it fly, and uh, bam, touchdown. Nice throw, nice catch, nice football play, good blocking by the offensive line. Great blocking by the offensive line all day long. The Bulldogs had over 600 yards in total offense, Coach. Yeah, it was a, it was a big day for us offensively. Um, Coach Taylor did a great job game planning, and uh, and then the student athletes responded, man. They uh, made plays. Ooh, and here's another big hit. Several wood laying hits on the day by the Bulldog defense and coverage teams. Yeah, that was uh, 24 there, um, and that's uh, Kelly. Kelly came back from his knee injury, and that's his second game plan, and he's playing well. Quan Travis Kelly, who we didn't think we would see much this season, but Coach, now you said you're talking about redshirting the young man. Kelly on another tackle. Yeah, we're going to redshirt him. We're gonna, you know, the NCAA changed the rules, so we're going to take advantage of it as much as we can. 
Um, we're going to play in four games and bring him back next year. So um, that's just Ooh. another player that we have for two more years. Ooh, and that was almost a clean block there coming it back. It was. It was. It was not a penalty there. That was a clean block. He got him in the ribs, and uh, he put him out of the game there. Here's Walters breaking out down the right side and couldn't make the safety miss. We, we got on a little bit about that. But um, is that your year going to know? That's your again, Coach. And getting a lot of help from Eli Jackson on the defensive line as well. Yeah, uh, Eli's playing well. You know, he's from Detroit, and here's Tank Dale. This guy's electric, man. <laughs> you know, one guy's not going to bring him down. One guy is not going to bring that guy down. And we'll here's see. the block by Clash. The spring, Dale. Dale just made a great run here. Cuts it back and then just outruns the defense, man. Coach, I got tired. He's so fast, I couldn't even count the yardage down for him. He gets in the end zone in a hurry. Yeah, he does, man. I think that was about a 38-yarder, man. We just throw it out there. Quarterback threw it behind the line of scrimmage, then Dale did the rest. Boom. Look at the block. Class set it up. He cut back on that guy, and then it's off to the races. Can you coach a receiver running back coach to feel where the rush or the pursuit might be coming from to know when to cut back, or is that just natural talent? Well, he's a great cut batter. He can feel those guys coming, and uh, he kind of sets them up. You know, he set them up with that one stick. <laughs> you know, he got that one, one stick cut. Um, but you can kind of coach them where the play should hit, mm -hmm. but then they got to, you got to play it out and see what it actually do hit at. And you were running screens to death. Here's another screen for Jenkins. He's trying to break one, too. Yeah, he, he did. He, he did the same thing um, as Dale. And uh, with a little cutback right there and, and almost broken. And he's inches away from uh, breaking plays, uh, not only at wide receiver, but in the kickoff return game. So, Coach, it's 14 to nothing at the half. You've gotten a little movement in the second quarter. Feel like the game is more in your control now? Yeah, it does. Um, you know, uh, we, we're playing so well on defense. Uh, we got them shut out. It's 14 to zip. We're moving the ball on offense. We spread them out there uh, the second quarter because the first quarter was backed up and kind of played conservative. So now we say we're going to go back to our traditional um, sets and uh, run the ball a little bit more and throw the ball. And, of course, Coach, we'll see more of those sets. The Bulldogs closing out the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. It was homecoming on the bluff of the Arkansas River, but the Bulldogs were the ones celebrated. We come back on the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell May. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. 94.9 WJAB-FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. Give your all to me. Give my all to you. 90.9 FM WJAB. For the campus of Alabama A&M University. Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Again, thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie, your host. More Maynard time, coach, coming up to the second half. And this is where we ran out of breath on the broadcast. We couldn't keep up with some of the scoring drives or some of the plays executed by your student athletes. Yeah, we had some one-play drives, a um, couple play drives. But we had some good blocking and some great execution uh, by the uh, wide receivers and the running backs in the running game and the offensive line. So 
Um, you know, that's what you love to see. You love to see it. Uh, unless your defense has been out there 12 plays and then they got to go right back out there, you don't want those one-play scores. But other than that, you love to, love to see them. It's, it's momentum, get the guys going, and um, it's always great. This was also an opportunity, Coach, for you to play a lot of student-athletes. You mentioned earlier that the redshirt rule has changed this year. They can play four games and still get redshirted. You got an opportunity to look at a lot of student-athletes. Yeah, we did, and uh, that, that's the whole key. Um, when you get in games like this, you want to get your guys out. Your starters, you don't want to get those guys hurt. You want those guys to be able to play the next week. And then you want to get guys that's been playing and practicing all year, uh, get those guys some game experience. And uh, that's what we was able to do. Number 24, <clears throat> who we mentioned earlier, a freshman, Caleb Riley from over in Georgia, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Coach coming into the second half is still homecoming a little longer halftime. Bulldogs trying to get loose, get back into the ball game because you think you're in a good spot right now, leading 14 to nothing. Yeah, we want to get back out, get loose, and uh, get going. I think uh, they had the ball, they had the ball coming out the second half, so we wanted to get a stop, and uh, we did. Uh, got great field position, but we didn't do anything with it the first possession. But then we came after that and got going. But here's the defense, um, as you can see, being very stingy to a great runner. You don't let them get started. That's the key. We didn't let them get started. Mm. So here we go, Walter's on a little buck sweep, and uh, he just takes it 75 yards, man, <laughs> outruns everybody. Coach, you like to say he doesn't have breakaway speed, but he's the only person in the picture. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I don't know how fast he is, but he faster than everybody on Pine Bluff team. <laughs> and the Bulldogs go up 21 to nothing. Again, we'll look at the replay here with Walter's running. Fine blocking out front. Great blocking by the offensive line. And when he got to the secondary, he just outran everybody, man, cut it back and uh, took it to the house. It's, I think it helped him out was it was the first play of the second half or, or second, and so he was fresh. And here's a throw. I mean, man, Akil Glass let that thing fly 359 yards worth of passing yesterday. Yeah, that was a great throw right there and catch by Octavius. Uh, you know, the guy was right on him, you know, 65 yards down the field, but that was a great throw by Akil, and he had another big day. Here's Dollar, another freshman running back who uh, took that in. Big boy, congratulations. Welcome to the Southwestern Athletic Conference, Tion Dollar, Lake City, Florida, the native freshman, true freshman. I mean, you got Dollar, Dell, Jenkins, true freshmen that are on the field, Coach. And Quarles. And Quarles. You know, so we got some freshmen, Eli Jackson. You know, so a lot of our freshmen are playing, and we tell them that when we recruit them, man, we're going to play the best guy. And so if you come in and beat somebody out or earn playing time, you're going to get it. And here's Quarles right here. And he. He caught that up from the four when we recovered it. So we got him out of there. And of course, you know, the what we do with running backs to fumble, don't you, Ted? What do you do with running backs to fumble, Coach? Move him to safety and corner. <laughs> Another fine throw by Kill Glass. Interesting kickoff technique by Pine Bluff, and that's been used against the Bulldog a couple of times where they split the coverage in two groups of five and then run to the middle of the field but try to cut off a third. Yeah, yeah, you know, different strokes for different folks, you know. Um, they're going to still wind up in the same spots when they run down the field, so. You do all you want to in the beginning. You better, get, we, you better get in your lanes. And here we go. You get quarrels, some carries in the ball game, coach. Getting a couple of looks at some other folks here. And this one, I thought you'd never have another running back in the ball game. Y'all insert one again. Oh yeah, that was uh, actually Dollar, uh, 25, the freshman. And uh, then we got quarrels and after that. But here's another screen pass. They just take to the house, the last play of the third <laughs> quarter, man. I mean, that's great blocking, man, by by. Um, uh, glass, not glass. A clash. Clash on the block. Yeah, and then the Octavius just did the rest, man. He just he just set him up. See, he Watch makes this. you he lose can run at the guy. <laughs> he can run at the guy and then just break out from away from him. See, make him stop his feet and then just run right around him. That's not very good defense, um, but we'll take it. You can't do anything with speed like that, though, coach. No, you can't do that speed right there now. Now that speed, Walters. That's a different story. <laughs> and now the Bulldogs go up with another score. You even put Alan Rios in the ball game, coach, to kick an extra point and to kick off. Yeah, we almost got this one back right there. That's a live ball. You know, uh, you know, Rios, we, we up so we can get him some kicks and get him some action. He practices every day just like everybody else. So here's a fumble right here. Calls from, I think, Dylan Hamilton calls another fumble. And Amari uh, picks oh, it up, mm -hmm. Holloway, and uh, got ran down by the quarterback, man. He, he won't hear the last of that. Coach Carr was yelling so hard in the booth, Coach, he thought he was going to jump out and start running the football. Yeah, that's how them defensive coaches do it. I mean, they want them uh, scooping scores and, and things of that nature. A little swing pass to Dollar, and, uh, and we, I decided to go ahead and take the points. 
uh, get a field goal kicker. He missed one last week, so get him a little confidence and, mm. and uh, kick that field goal there. Interesting formations here, Coach. You're going to run the jet sweep with your third unit, I would guess, who's playing the game now. Yeah, yeah. You know, those guys practice. As I, I always told you we're going we're gonna to run the same plays. You know, so now some other guys get the opportunity to run those same plays. That's Josh Cartwright, number five, who's in the ball game at quarterback. Seven. He changed his number during the ball game, Coach. Somebody stole his seven jersey at the Classic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had to give him five, and that caused us a little consternation too. we realized before the game that was what was going on. And now you're setting up another run here. Joseph Burke getting an opportunity. I told he and Jones I've got to include them on the spot chart. And this is the best run by Robert Dale's finest, Dylan Smith. Yeah, he made his read, man. He's finally uh, buying in and uh, making his reads. When he makes his read, the game's a lot easier when – you got mm -hmm. one guy to read. If he squeeze, you pull it. If he don't, you give it. And that's what he did this drive. And uh, see that guy pull, tackle uh, boom, uh, your boy, and then he just pulled it, you know. So, uh, you know, when that guy's going to tackle Burt like that, you just pull it and you got no choice but to be wide open. Dylan Smith says, Coach, you're not talking about running him. Dylan Smith? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'd say this is one thing I said about. I know one thing I know for sure. Arkansas Pine Bluff guys are slow because Dylan Smith and Trayvon scored and Kill Glass had some good runs. So uh, I don't know. They got to get some more speed in that secondary. We'll see what happens at the Bulldogs spring game. Bulldogs win at 45 to 14. Coach, win one of the next two games. You will assure us of having a winning season since 2012. What do you think about that? Yeah, you're right, Ted. The Golders win both of them, though. But you're right, if we win one, we'll be assured of winning season in 2012. And uh, this is great for the program, the alumni, uh, the players, and my coaches uh, that we worked so hard, got in here late, um, you know, had two weeks to recruit, and got, a, got the recruiting class we got. I told you on signing day that we, I thought we had a real good recruiting class for two weeks of recruiting. And as you can see the fruit of the labor uh, uh, now that the season has started and all these freshmen are stepping up making big-time plays. And we can't wait for the next recruiting class. And we come back to close out the show. We'll talk about the Bulldogs' next opponent, Grambling State, comes to town on Senior Day. Welcome back to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! <laughs> Darrow brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. There's student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. 98.9 WJAB FM Huntsville 100,000 watts 24 hours a day Smooth jazz and cool vocals and the home of mellow madness till midnight you bring me joy. 90.9 WJAB from the campus of Alabama A&M University Thank you for watching the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie. Sorry to welcome them back to the coach, to the show coach on the last break, but hey, y'all didn't go anywhere. We got fine commercials to show. Speaking of which, this Saturday afternoon, the Bulldogs will entertain Grambling State University on high school senior day, Bulldog football senior day, military appreciation day. There's another day in there somewhere, coach, but there's a lot going on on campus this week. 
and we will be recruiting band members as well. Yes, adding to the marching maroon and white as well, Coach. Yeah, that's that's great. You know, uh, we need that. Get the community involved, um, um, and uh, you know, the more people, the better. You know, I think we're gonna have another big crowd. I think we're gonna break the uh, tennis record this year, this week, and uh, look forward to having a big crowd and put on a good show for them. All I've ever asked for is for us to have 50,000 at home attendance. We're at 45,000, only three home games. Let's make this last game a huge way to send off our seniors who bought into your system, Coach, and now look what happens, a chance to have a winning season. Yeah, you know, that's, that's it. You know, you got to buy in. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is the seniors and their leadership and um, doing everything that we ask. And now that we can win these last two, they have a chance to go out 7-4. and four. And uh, with a classic win, and uh, mm -hmm. turn around and say they the ones that turned the program, got the program back, turned around, headed back mm -hmm. in the right direction after having six straight losing seasons. Mm. So we'll take that in the hand. Of course, for ticket information, you may dial 256-372-4700 or go to aamutix.com, aamutix.com. And Monday night, Coach, tomorrow night at Applebee's on North Memorial Parkway, you may join us for Bulldog Talk with head coach Connell Maynard. You're a little bit looser on the radio show, Coach, than you are on television. What's the difference? Uh, I, you know, it, it's, uh, it's live, you know, and uh, I, it's with our fans, and I want our fans to see who I really am. All they get to see is me on the sideline during the game. Uh, so I would like for those guys to come out and see who I really am, sit down and talk to me, shake my hand, and, and uh, just get to know me a little bit. And Coach always gets a stack of envelopes or stack of, uh, of napkins with plays on them. Coach Grambling comes to town, you get a chance to benchmark your program. Yes, this would be a, um, a milestone uh, victory if we could get it. You know, uh, we beat the, the little dogs of the conference, if you want to say. Now we've got to start beating the big dogs, and that's the Grambling, the Southerns, and the Alcorns. And this would be a great week for us. We, we welcome the challenge to see what we really are. Uh, so it will really stack up against the big, big boys in the conference, and this week could tell us a lot. Thank you for watching this week's edition of the Alabama A&M Football Review. Next week, Coach Manor will be talking about a victory over Grambling State.